sugar, spice, and everything nice. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little girl. But Professor Utonium accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction, Chemical X. Thus, the Powerpuff Girls were born! Gee, my Dixie needs a sword. I can't do this anymore. Bubbles must see. Stop it, Bubbles. You're so annoying. Nag drawing ka lang pa rin. Hey, I don't look like that. Hey, are you doing your math homework? Yeah. No. Oh, that's just easy as 3.1415926535. Mm. Pi, it's just as easy as pi. Please help me. I'm dying. I need your help. I don't know how to do this. Teach me! Sure, I did it last night. Before we tackle the given problem, it would be best to recall what we know about the geometric series, particularly finite. Soon, you will realize its importance to our task. Basically, a geometric series is a series with a constant ratio between successive terms. Quick little note, a series is the sum of the terms of an infinite sequence. Thus, a geometric series is in the form of a sub 1 plus a sub 1 r plus a sub 1 r squared plus a sub 1 r cube and so on, with r not being equal to 1. However, cases may vary. If only a partial sum of the infinite sequence is to be obtained, the series is called finite, and if otherwise, it is called infinite. But in this case, we will focus further on the finite geometric series. Defined by its name, the finite geometric series is a geometric series with a definite number of terms or n. It may be understood clear with the term partial sum. It is in the form of a sub 1 plus a sub 1 r plus a sub 1 r squared plus a sub 1 r cube and so on until a sub 1 r to the n minus 1 with n not being equal to infinity and r not being equal to 1. Thanks to our early mathematicians, they have discovered a formula for the sum of the first n terms of a finite geometric series. S sub n equals a sub 1 quantity of 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Where S sub n is the sum of the first n terms, a sub 1 the first term, r the common ratio, and n the first n terms. Anyway, now we use this formula to solve our given problem. Our problem states that there is a geometric sequence of 8, 16, 32, and so on, and we are looking for the sum of the first 8 terms denoted as s sub 8. As we know the formula, all we need to do now is plug in the needed values. Clearly, a sub 1 or the first term is 8. Meanwhile, as r is the constant ratio between successive terms, we can use an instance from the given sequence like 16 divided by 8, which is 2. Another instance may be 32 with divided by 16, which will give us the same value. Finally, n or the first n terms is 8. Now, we plug in these three given values to the formula, getting an expression of s sub 8 equals 8 quantity 1 minus 2 to the 8 over 1 minus 2. 
Simplifying further, we conclude that the sum of the first eight terms of the given geometric sequence is 2040. Let's try this slightly different problem. In this problem, we are given that the sum of the first four terms of a geometric sequence denoted by S sub 4 is 360 and R the common ratio to be 3 and we are looking for A sub 1 or the first term. Using the formula once again, we plug in the needed given values. As we need A sub 1, we need S sub n, n, and R. From our given, it is clear that for an instance where n is 4, S sub n is 360 and R is 3. Plugging in these values to the formula, we get an equation of 360 is equal to A sub 1 quantity 1 minus 3 to the 4th over 1 minus 3. Solving for A sub 1, we get 9. Thus, 9 is the first term of the geometric sequence. <gasps> it's Mojo Jojo and his minions! You can't beat me, Powerpuff Girls, for we have new power. Can't you see? We clearly outnumber you. <laughs> Oh no, Mojo Dojo and his minions are going to multiply, and now they are already 4, but we're only 3. But of course, we have a plan. Hmm, we better hurry. Remember that discussion on finite geometric series earlier? Well, I guess it wasn't just helpful to our homework, but definitely for our mission. We know that Mojo Dojo and his minions are initially 4 in number. But he says that they multiply at the rate of twice their previous number, retaining the original clones. On our side, we are initially 3 in number, and we on the other hand multiply at the rate of thrice our original number, retaining our original clones as well. We also know that the maximum of 3 times of cloning is possible for super beings on this human world. We can represent this situation in a geometric series. We can let a sub 1 be the first term of our side, that is, the initial number of clones. In this case, a sub 1 is 3. Next, we let r sub 1 be the common ratio of our side, that is, the rate of our cloning power. In this case, r sub 1 is 3. On the other side, we can let b sub 1 be the first term of Mojo Dojo side, that is, the initial number of clones. In this case, b sub 1 is 4. Next, we let R sub 2 be the common ratio of Mojo Dojo side, that is the rate of their cloning power. In this case, R sub 2 is 2. N or the first N terms is common to both sides, which is 3. This is depicted as the number of times we can clone at maximum. Let's write them in equations and compute for the sum of the first N terms of each or the maximum number of total clones. For our side, we have 3, quantity 1 minus 3 cube over 1 minus 3. Simplifying further this expression, we get 39, or 39 maximum of total clones. For this side, we get an expression of 4, quantity 1 minus 2 cube over 1 minus 2. Simplifying further this expression, we get 28, or 28 maximum of total clones. Hurrah! As our maximum number of total clones is greater than their theirs, we will surely win. Now, we're ready to fight.
No! All my plans ruined. I'll get you back, Powerpuff Girls.